Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. I'm doing this poem as part of a contest, so you're gonna watch me live as I go through my thoughts as I'm coding. Uh, there'll be an explanation near the end, and for more context, there'll be a link below on the actual screencast of the contest. Uh, how did you do? Let me know how you do. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and here we go. So at this point, Q4, I'm six minutes in-ish. I thought I have a good chance to finish at a very high rank, so uh, this is Q4, cherry pick up two. So I'm a little bit, I'm not hustling, hustling, but I'm like, okay, I have a mental clock, it's going really well. Let's get it correct. If I get it correct without a wrong answer, I will probably finish in a good place. So here I look, I read the problem, uh, and I immediately knew that the first thing I had to do was pull up the calculator and pull it out. I said n is equal to 70 or, or, or c is equal to 70. I have, um, first thing I did was 70 to the, to the third power. And I also double checked 70 to the fourth power in a, in a thing that you'll see later. Um, so that's what I'm doing now. I have my calculator just to check the numbers, just to make sure that that is a feasible algorithm. And, and once I did figure out that it was a feasible algorithm, I start coding on the dynamic programming algorithm. So the n, once again, uh, there'll be the more in-depth explanation will be later on in the video because I'm just still think uh, talking over my thought process. But the idea is that well, now I'm doing the base case where if the row is past the last row, then we return zero because you're not picking any more cherries or yeah, cherries, right? Uh, and A and B are basically where robot one and robot two is right now. So and that's what I'm I'm setting up. And I, right now I'm also uh, I think right at this moment, I'm pulling out the calculator to check out 70 to the fourth because the 70 to the third state, that's what I did, do the math on. But then I was like, okay, do I need inside this algorithm, do I need, um, do I need an O of, like how much of a graph do we need, right? Um, and it actually turned out it is not n to the fourth, but it's n to the third, but I wasn't quite sure yet how, because uh, I think I just, I don't know. Uh, but I added an if statement here, so because there's a this symmetry, and what I mean by that is that if you could swap where a and b is, and it'll be okay. So in that case, it is mirrored, so then you just, you just choose A to be the first, uh, the robot to the left and B to the robot to the right. Uh, and I'm doing some like minor optimization. I think I, before I thought that this may be N, N to the fourth, but after I wrote it out, I was like, oh, actually just N cubed. Um, because for each N or for each cell, we're doing nine units of work, if you want to call it that. It's O of one, obviously, so O of N to the cube. But yeah, but basically, here we're just enumerating the number of ways A and B can be. Uh, I'm just kind of writing out the, my mental template right now, so it's not quite, um, yeah. But yeah, but after I set up the initial conditions, I was like, okay, what, what am I doing? I'm just thinking around the conditions. <laughs> Basically, I have to check that A and B are in bell. I was like, okay, I don't want to copy and paste a lot. So let's just give it variables. And basically, if N A, which is why I say the next A, uh, that's why the N A. The, I mean, it's not a great variable name either case, but so that's my thinking. But I, I was like, okay. If n a is equal to n b, meaning if the robots are in the same place, we we only take one, take the the worth once. Otherwise, we take the worth twice, right? Well, not twice, but we we take the cherries from a and the cherries from b. And just to go back to the mirrored conversation, here we do we make a the left one and b the right one, just for symmetry reasons. And in theory, this should be ready to go. This is about 11 minutes in, a little bit longer, maybe 12 minutes by the time I actually submit. But I get 
I'm just double checking some stuff. I'm looking to see why it's wrong, and I was like, oh, yeah, because I didn't finish fighting this thing. <laughs> I think I got to, I don't know what I was distracted by. But yeah, it looks good. I submit. This would have been 11 minutes in, 11 and a half maybe. Uh, and I got wrong answer. I was like, huh, why? How? What? I was pretty confident about it, to be honest. But I ran code. I wasn't sure. And I was maybe trying to visualize it. Um, so basically, this wrong answer would end up costing me about eight minutes, which would have been the difference between where I am and and about fifth, maybe six, because I, I guess I'm not looking at the Chinese server. Yeah, basically fifth or six if I had gotten it right. But the short answer behind my bug is that I started, I started the robots, not at. Zero, zero, and zero, or zero and minus one. I started on the one before that. And if you look at the image on example two, and I'll complain a lot about it in, later in the video, so I guess you'll see it anyway. But basically, I misunderstood the picture to be you can go left, down, or right from the first choice. So once I fixed that, it was good. But I, even then, I wasn't sure that that was right just because from the reading. But uh, but otherwise, it is what it is. And I mean, overall, still 28th, it seems like, for the contest, so got to feel good about that. Anyway, hang out with the other Larry. He'll <laughs> complain about Q4 for a little bit more, but there's also an explanation. So I will see y'all later. Wake up and let's let's get this started. Uh, so this is Cherry Pickup Two. So this is a dynamic programming problem, as you may see from the code, which is here. I, I'll go back to it. Don't worry, I'm not skipping it. But the idea is that um, a lot of this is going to be dimensional analysis to see whether it's feasible. But the idea is that well, if you have two robots, you might as well move them at the same time at the on the rows, right? And if you do that then you can just, ch then, well, how many rows can, or how many, co well, how many rows are there, right? There's 70 rows, I think, because I've made sure, because otherwise it wouldn't work. So there's 70 rows. Each one contains, uh, let's call them robot A and robot B, and because that's what I have here. Robot A could be in 70 different places, and robot B could be in 70 places, right? So from that, we just kind of brute force where it could be next step. And that's pretty much what I did here. Uh, so basically, I for each row, uh, well, if if this is the end of the, this is at the bottom, we return zero. Otherwise, we we go one at a time. We we basically go okay. Robot A go left and right, or go straight down. Robot B go left, right, straight down. And we we do the math. Just as remember, left, right, straight down. Not in that order, I suppose. And then now we just check that uh, both the robots are still in bound. And if they're in bound, we just take the min and the max. So this is just basically to sort the two elements so that you can imagine that this is symmetric, right? Like if A is in position one and B is in position five, that's the same state as B in position A and A in position one, right? Or 
but basically, you know, swapping the, the world bus doesn't really matter. Is what I'm trying to do here. And in theory, it should save you about half the time or something like that. So I was in, I was a little bit worried about running time because seven. Uh, this is n to the fourth algorithm, and this is seventy to the fourth, which is probably cutting a little bit close. Or at least I wasn't sure because uh, especially with lead code, the timing is always a little bit tricky. And then the case here is that the cost, right? The cost is well, if they're both in the same space, then you cannot both pick up the 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 space, right? So th that's why there's only one cost. And then if they're not in the same space, then you add where where they are and add them together. And then the best would just be the best place for you know this current state is just going for the next row with the robots in NA and NB plus the cost. So I thought that was pretty straightforward. I I thought I did this pretty quickly as well, uh, but but the problem was that, uh, and I was a little misled by this example because I thought that you start before the zero row so that you could choose on the first row different elements. Uh, basically on the first row you could select between either the zero zero or zero one or zero and minus one or zero and minus two I suppose. Basically I thought that you could have some freedom about it, and that's what I got the wrong answer on. I had to read, read it, uh, but this diagram was kind of sad face for me, and it cost me five minutes and maybe a top 10, maybe a top 20 or whatever it is. Uh, probably end up being top 50, but that's okay. A um, little bit sad uh, because I feel like um, they could have also just had one problem and that would have, like one example, that would have solved that ambiguity. Uh, I mean, I guess the here it does tell you exactly, but but that like I said, the picture kind of told a different story, which is a little bit, um, and it passed the system testing in the first try, so I guess it gave me a full sense of security and really have to reread these things. But some of that is, of course, that um, what you know, people were really fast as well, right? So and I kind of knew that while I was doing it, so I I was definitely um, I was definitely you know like having that. Awareness and be like, okay, now you gotta do it kind of fast. Uh, you can't really do it that slowly. So yeah, 